The relationship between city design and technology is one that never stands still. And as a designer, I believe that the technology available to us is integral to how places such as the Greenwich Peninsula are to grow and really serve the emerging population. The ability to cross the River Thames really dictated how London grew from its Roman heritage. And now, environmental modelling and a wealth of other technology is really vital to its continued expansion. For me, virtual reality is the next step in taking these existing capabilities and really pitching them alongside the kind of unpredictable nature of human beings. For Greenwich River Park, designing in virtual reality allowed real people, commuters, designers, to experience design proposals at a one-to-one -one scale and then develop ideas further so that the final public realm proposal really responded to experiences that were important to them as individuals and not just the principles that were valued by myself as a landscape architect. It really centred on turning this linear journey into a sequence of really engaging experiences. When we look at today's condition of the Greenwich Riverside, the landscape is, is so outward facing towards the views of the Canary Wharf skyline that it's as if no effort has been made to define the green space as an attraction in its own right. It lacks diversity in every aspect of what defines a river park, whether that's opportunities for exploration and play, or seasonal change, or differing relationships between people and the riverside and the built form. Designing in VR fundamentally centres on the movement of people. At the largest scale, a new bridge will span the River Thames, connecting the business hub of Canary Wharf to the emerging residential and leisure centre that is Greenwich. The bridge landing's design is integrated as part of the public realm, so it offers both an opportunity to rest and reflect above the park, as well as being a statement of arrival for the Greenwich Peninsula as a whole. The experience of moving down the staircase and under the archway was really driven by the guys and girls who experienced the landscape at different phases. They therefore knew what level of intensity the space required in order to evoke a kind of emotional reaction, as well as how the thoroughfares must work leading away from the bridge. Combine this with contemporary lighting and detailing into the surfaces, and the statement on arrival is really personal to that exact location. To the north, the Skyway is another major feature that was designed in virtual reality. The desire is to avoid one of the site's pinch points, to overlook the wild landscape, and to have the opportunity to be either protected from or raised towards the O2 Arena's architecture led to a raised walkway through the trees that explores level change at a large scale to provide an escape, while at a small scale to provide opportunities for play. Its landings really differ between secret exploration and more natural sweeping arrivals, and it's these combinations of scale interactions that give areas of the park a greater intimacy against the mass of the built form. Connecting a series of features, such as the bridge or the skyway, major and minor thoroughfares focus on edge detailing, where first the speed and direction of movement was influenced by the virtual reality, and then desires to pause are integrated through smaller level changes and niches. This really gives a seamless movement to those who require it and a multitude of seating types for those who are looking to prolong views or experiences. It's really the dynamic nature of human movement that has really driven how this spatial layout has resolved itself. The park is dynamic in itself. While the movement of people really dictates the kind of structure of space, 
The soft landscape detailing varies between a kind of consistency and variety. At a sculptural level, the tree selection and ground cover really define whether it's protected niches or more direct avenues or visual buffers, and these really work in tandem with some of the sweeping hard landscape features. And then, at a much more temporal level, the riverfront planting gives different statements of colour and shape throughout the year, particularly the flowering of, say, the tulips against whether it's the grasses or the alliums. Similarly, swathes of asters in the woodland planting will give a burst of colour seasonally, contrasting against, say, the consistency of the pine and spruce trees that tower above. This woodland planting in particular is key to reducing the visual impact of the hotel and the arena on the landscape. By combining the woodland buffer with a vegetated rooftop terrace, the hotel gains an amenity space that both integrates with its wider surroundings at ground level and from above the riverfront park. Together, this planting and spatial layout really allowed the park to not only maximise the experience of the Canary Wharf skyline views outwards, but also appreciate more of the experiences that look within the park itself. Designing with virtual reality is really about generating primary source information from the people who will one day walk this landscape. As the design has developed, it has retained the benefits of having, say, trees that combat heat island effects, or the ability to use levels with permeable paving and planting to retain grey water. It still appreciates the economic benefits of connecting two urban centres, but it has really given these benefits an identity that isn't just about how Greenwich might be, say, reflected in the balustrade detail, which is important but one that is rooted in the actions and interactions of real people and their genuine personal experiences. It is the people who have experienced the many options for what is available to this landscape that have really driven how I as a designer have resolved the avenue to North Greenwich Station, the river's edge, the bridge landing garden, the hotel terrace, the water avenue, the pleasure lawns, the revived industrial jetty in the Hotel Spillow. A new visitor's centre in the Pebble. The Northern Jetty and Skyway. The linear terrace landscape overlooking Trinity Boy Wharf. And the final integration back into the O2 Arena's public ground. Tied together, these make Greenwich River Park a place to be experienced.